Zion, give God glory. Come on and just lift your hand and worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I, I hope I. I hope I heard right, but somebody in this house, mm, yeah, thank you, Jesus, needs something. And I believe mm, the Lord told me to 
I believe it was impressed by my spirit. Mm.
come on and give the Lord a shout. Back up in here. Ah, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. I know that you may not understand what's going on right now, especially business, but I keep getting these impressions. Ah. I need all the saints who trust me to grab somebody by the hand and tell them that praise was for tomorrow. This praise is for today. Hallelujah. Marcel, Marcel, that's okay, baby. I got him. Hallelujah. Y'all know what? Cornelia, y'all go ahead and sit down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Saints of God, for the next one or two minutes, every believer in this house, Stand to your feet, lift your hand, open your mouth, and give God some glory. Give God praise. Hey, hey, yeah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Zion. Hallelujah, Zion. Hallelujah, Zion. of you with your scriptures with you. I'm going straight into the word today. Hallelujah. Mm. Turn with me please to Habakkuk. I'm going to give you a few moments to get there because I know you did not use this for your devotion this morning. It's one of the minor prophets found near the end of the Old Testament. It's right before Zephaniah and Zechariah and Malachi. It's only three chapters here in Habakkuk. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that we know how to listen to the Holy Ghost. Somebody who's glad for Jesus, just holler up in this place. In Habakkuk chapter 3, thank you, Lord. Beginning with verse 17, if you have it, please signify by saying praise the Lord. The prophet said, though the fig tree should not blossom, and there be no fruit on the vines, though the yield of the olive should fail, and the fields produce no food, Though the flock should be cut off from the fold, and there be no cattle in the stalls, yet I will exalt thee, O Lord, I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He has made my feet like hinds feet and makes me walk on my high places. May the Lord add a favor and a blessing and encouragement to the reading, the believing, and the receiving of his word. Father, get in your manservant today. Bring forth a word that will help somebody, encourage somebody, I personally magnify you and make you real big. I thank you for this place called Zion. Be glorified. Thank you for your presence already. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank God. So be it. It is done. If God gives me utterance, I would like to minister to you today from this subject the confessions of a conflicted and perplexed clergyman. 
the confessions of a conflicted and perplexed clergyman. And as a subtopic, I would like for you to touch somebody and just tell them, in spite of whatever is going on in your life, God is still your refuge and your strength. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. And after you give your neighbor, God bless you, you may be seated in this sanctuary. God favor you, people of God, and for those who can handle it, God bless you too. God purpose you. I am extremely grateful today that the presence of God abides in this place and that you bring him in every Sunday and every Wednesday. I am grateful for this aggregation of singers who are always so faithful, my praise team and the koinonia. I'm grateful for these minstrels, these pastors, these ministers who are so faithful in assisting us. Amen. That's right. I'm grateful for our greeters and our sound crew, and they don't get enough recognition, in my opinion. And I'm grateful for them in all that they do. I, as you know, have been coming out of the book of Ephesians. Uh, but after listening to the experiences and uh, the testimonies of some of you who are gathered here today, uh, you have to realize that as a pastor, during the week, there is much that I listen to and much that I try to help people with. It, it, it is interesting, and I'm not saying this for the purpose of you not talking to your pastor. That's not why I'm saying this. But some, sometimes it gets so overwhelming until... I cannot get my own stuff done. Uh, but that's okay because I have come to believe that when I can't get it done, God will do it for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to help the people of God. But in studying, in my devotion, uh, this prophet Habakkuk, um, I see a man, John, who is conflicted and a man who is perplexed, just like some of us. Uh, Habakkuk's name means embracer, embracer of God. He had been faithful, but he had been prophesying to an unfaithful people. Habakkuk is angry, yeah. and I think, I think it's all right to be angry in a healthy way with God sometimes and stop making other people the brunt of your anger with God. Because in our depravity, and in our frailness, most times than not, we really do not understand God. We have to graduate from level to level. The gospel says that we move from grace to grace. I stand before you this morning perplexed myself most Sunday mornings and most Wednesdays and most days of the week, I, like you, I am perplexed. The reason why this man Habakkuk, if you read, it's only three chapters, if you read it, the reason why he's so perplexed is because he's wondering, number one, it's kind of like us. 
He's wondering why God has not judged his people, although his people had turned on him. Uh, but the second reason for him being conflicted is because it was multi-leveled when God did choose to judge his people, he was judging his people by a people who were more wicked than his own. Uh, he was choosing the Babylonians to judge his people. And uh, the clergyman, the pastor at the time, the prophet at the time, did not understand why God would use a people as evil as the Babylonians to judge his own. If I were to back up a little bit and tell you a little bit about what history tells us about Habakkuk, he was already burdened because he had a mother and siblings that were worrying the devil out of him. Not only that, but they had moved over into the ways of the world. It is extremely easy, if you are not careful, to be sucked in to the ways of this world in which we live. When I think about Trayvon Martin, and I, I think about the different men, especially, who've been gunned down by police and authorities in this country, and it doesn't seem like sometimes there is justice, I get perplexed. When I think about that man who I hate to say, but I have to say was my fraternity brother who killed that old man a few weeks ago. I have to get perplexed about it until I realize that if you are not in God and God is not in you, that sometimes the truth is you lose your mind. Uh, uh, things will happen to you. Uh, things will go down in this world, I've come to tell you, that will uh, kind of influence you or, or possess you and take you over and make you do things you would not necessarily do. I know that some of y'all may be saved to the bone and sanctified to the marrow, but if you keep on living, uh, the time will come where you will have some questions for God. And these three chapters that were included in the canon of Scripture that are called Habakkuk uh, uh, is basically a conversation with God. Uh, however, in chapter 3, we can see how if we're not careful, our emotions and what appears to be bipolarized traits of our personalities and dysfunctional aspects of our character can cause us to miss what God is doing and doubt that is God doing it. Um, I don't want you to ever lose fact of something that I've told you now for over 30 years, but we lose uh, sight of it in that the Scripture says, uh, be ye not deceived. God is not mocked. What you sow, you're going to reap. And so all of that stuff that you may have done years ago, don't think you've gotten away with it. Sometimes it takes it a while. It, uh, the world calls it karma. It takes a minute for karma to come full circle. Uh, and, and you need to stop asking, why is this happening to me? You need to go back down the corridors of your life and see who you did this to 
and maybe that's why it's happening to you. But there's something else here too. It may be happening because God is trying to get your attention. Don't think that you are exempt from trial because you know the pastor. The pastor goes through more hell than you do. Don't think you are exempt from pain because your father was a deacon or your mother was a deaconess. Ah, if God has a call on your life, you best believe that with every assignment of God, it's going to come an assignment from the enemy. Understand that Israel had been messed up for a long time and been rebellious for a long time. And I tell folk all the time, even aspiring pastors and aspiring ministers, when they come to my office, I ask them, are you ready? Are you ready to bear this cross? Not only bear it, but are you ready to be nailed to it because you will not become a target of the enemy until, until you begin to obey God. You will not become a target of the enemy until you say yes to God. You will not become a target of the enemy until you start praising and worshiping God. But let me give you this news flash from heaven. Let me give you this tidbit that when you begin to praise the Lord and the enemy attacks you, that's not the time to stop praising him. That's the time to lose your mind so you can keep on praising him without thinking about the hell that may be going on in your life. We forget what Jesus said when Jesus said many, or the Word of God says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. And Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble. Oh, but saints of Zion, saints of the living God, he didn't leave it there. He said, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Stuff will happen to all of us. Let me tell you about life. Hallelujah. Life is just like um, that garbage pail uh, or that garbage can in your house. Every time you cut the fat off the meat, Every time you take the outer leaves off the cabbage, every time you get rid of the stem on the collard green, every time that food in your refrigerator goes bad, it goes into the trash. <laughs> hey, but if you're not careful, after a while, I don't care what kind of trash bags you're using, you'll walk in your house and you'll smell something stinky and then you find your way to the trash can and you tie it up and you take it out. I've come to tell you that's what life is. All that trash and all that stinky stuff that you've thrown into the trash bag of your life is no wonder why your life is stinking because you have not taken the trash out. You got to come to the altar and you got to tell God about it. If the songwriter said, take your burden to the Lord, I wish I had a church in here today. Y'all miss your cue. I said, take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. When you find out that there's nothing that you can do about it, you've done everything you know how to do and it's still not working right. It's still not turning out. I don't care whether you're at home, in the bathroom, at work, or in church, you need to pick them up, put them down, stomp the devil back down, 
and let him know he can bring whatever he wants to bring. But look here, devil, I got the victory. And so y'all, when I look here at Habakkuk and that God, John, was gonna use the Babylonians to judge his people. The Babylonians had on them an assignment from God. That don't, that don't even sound right. That they had, oh my God. Oh, I'm feeling this now. I'm so glad I got my robe on today because I'm in warfare and I'm feeling this right now. The Babylonians were on an assignment from God. How can God use the enemy to do something for him? Well, the word says that God will cause the wrath of men to praise him. You can act the fool all you want, but God's going to cause it to praise him. The Babylonians had a twofold assignment. What was their assignment? Number one, to judge the people of God. Oh yes, saints we still get judged. But number two, their second assignment was to test the faith of the pastor and test the faith of the prophet and test the faith of the clergyman. Let me tell you something, that every man of God, every woman of God, yeah, yeah, and you don't have to be in the pulpit to be a man or a woman of God, but every man and every woman of God got an assignment against them. The enemy is gonna come up against you like a flood, but that's when you need to stand flat-footedly and say the Lord will raise up a standard against him before the enemy, before the enemy can defeat me. He's got to go through the blood. He's got to go through the cross. He's got to go through the Holy Ghost in order to get to me. That you miss your cue again. That was shouting material. That the devil can't get to you unless God allows him to get to you. And if God allows him to get to you, what that means is that before much longer, you're going to come out. And when you come out, you're coming out with a new hallelujah. You're coming out with a new dance. You're coming out with a new praise. You got to learn how to walk through your house and smack the devil in the face. You got to learn how to give the Lord a Shabbat at home. Don't wait until the battle is over. Praise him right now. I said praise him right now. I said praise him right now. And so y'all, and so y'all, Habakkuk was upset because of the assignment that the enemy had against him. But if you know somebody that you're standing or sitting next to, I want you to grab them and say you have an assignment too. Hallelujah. Tell them again, you got an assignment too. That's why you made it through the last storm because you're under assignment. That's why you're making it through this storm because you're under assignment. That's why you better keep on praising him because you're under assignment. After I've been through, I'm gonna come out like pure gold because I'm under. Well, y'all, well, y'all, well, y'all, Israel was just like some of us. 
we come to church uh, and we get excited uh, over the music uh, but when it comes to the word uh, we try to find uh, a place where we can't be seen uh, so we can sit there and roll our eyes but let me tell you something Negro huh? you keep on sitting there you keep on rolling your eyes because God's got a way of turning the tables and getting you to the place where you won't have a choice but to lift him up and so y'all I'm done but in chapter 3 verse 19 Habakkuk after he had argued with God wait a minute Elder Riley I almost forgot something Habakkuk said something that the apostle Paul said after he stopped complaining and after he started thinking about it wait 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 a minute grab somebody by the hand and say start thinking about it say I dare you to start thinking about it wait a minute when waves of affliction sweep over the soul and sunlight is hidden from view whenever you're tempted to fret or complain just think of his goodness to you how many y'all know that God is a good God just stop for a minute and think of his goodness to you grab somebody by the hand and say think of his goodness to you and so y'all, and so y'all, hey, I'm not done, Tony. I'm not done. Y'all turn around, grab somebody else, and say, stop complaining, huh? And start thinking. Say, neighbor, God's been good to you. So why are you acting like that? It's time for you to bless him. It's time for you to praise him. Learn everything. Let everything, let everything, let everything, let everything that has breath. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. And so Habakkuk, when he finished getting mad with God, Habakkuk said, well, y'all, the just shall live by faith. And so Paul picked up on that. And Paul said, the just man shall live by faith. Tanja, I don't want to get stuck there. But when I'm going through the valley of the shadow of death, I got to remember I'm a just man. I got to live by faith. Every time I go through a trial, I'm a just man. I got to remember I live by faith every time my finances get funny I got to remember that the just man shall live by faith every time my child acts funny I've got to remember that the just man shall live by faith faith woke me up this morning faith got me at church today Faith is going to get me home. Faith will pick you up. Faith will change the dynamics of your life. And so y'all, Habakkuk said, I'm done. I'm done. He said, though the fig tree should not blossom. In other words, if I lose my job, he said, and there be no fruit on the vine. If I ain't got uh, no money coming in, though the yield of the olive should fail, if I don't feel like my anointing is working and the fields uh, produce no food, though the flocks uh, should be cut off, it's still uh, all right because I'm still in good times. Oh, I'm feeling this today. 
I'm going to preach this today because I, I feel like going on. Though trials come on every hand, I feel like going on. I don't always feel like it, but when I think back over my life, I feel like going on. 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 I feel like praising him. I feel like praising him. I feel like praising him. I feel like running on. I've come too far. Let's hold it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Zion. Thank you. Thank you, Zion, for helping me preach. But I'm about to finish. He said, I will exalt her in the Lord, no matter what he does. Because God, I need all y'all to grab somebody and say, God is a sovereign God. And he does all things well. Say, neighbor, I'm here today because he does all things well. I may not have what I think I ought to have, but guess what, neighbor? He does, he does, he does all things well. All things well. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a provider. He's a way maker. He's a way in. He does. He said, I'm done. He said, I'm going to rejoice in the God of my salvation. I'm going to rejoice in the God of my salvation. I'm done, y'all. He said, I am going to rejoice. Can y'all help me one more time? Smack somebody and say, I'm going to rejoice in the God of my salvation. I can't speak for y'all, but when my mama died, I had to rejoice in the God of my salvation. When I lost my job, I had to rejoice in the God of my salvation. When they were talking about taking my house, I had to rejoice in the God of my salvation because he's the same God with the same power. And if he did it before, tell somebody, he'll do it again. Praise him. Praise him, Zion. Praise him, Zion. Praise him, Zion. Hallelujah. God knows him. God knows him. What he's doing. Because the Lord is my strength. I believe the psalmist said that the Lord, I'm sorry, y'all. I don't mean to go this long. But I'm trying to get the rest of you dead Negroes up, up off your butt and get you to praise the Lord a little bit. The psalmist said that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When my enemies and my foes came upon me, to devour my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Though a host be encamped against me, of this one thing shall I be confident. One thing I have asked of the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. For in the day of trouble, in the day of trouble, 
in the day of trouble, in the day of trouble, he shall hide me, hide me. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, wonderful Jesus. We thank you for your word. Hallelujah. Your word brings life. It brings deliverance. It brings healing. It set the captives free. Oh, yes, it does. Hallelujah. Come on and just lift your hands all over the building. And let's begin to worship God. Hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus. You're so awesome. Such a faithful God. Faithful to heal. Faithful to deliver. Faithful to save. We thank you for your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. There is none like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, while we remain standing, is there anyone here that desires to give their life to the Lord? Now is the time to come. Scripture says that the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Is there anyone who wants to make the Lord Jesus their Lord and Savior this morning? You can come now. Let's give God praise for his word. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. We've come to that portion of our service where we worship the Lord with our giving. All believers. Come on, say it like you mean it. All believers. If you have your tithe and you're glad about it, stand to your feet. Everyone with your tithe, if you're a lady, to be able to bless God with your tithe. Hallelujah. Lift your tithe up unto the Lord and let's pray collectively. Say, Father be glorified. Bring your tithe with great joy. And your pastoral offering stand to your feet. That should be everybody. If you have your offering and your pastoral offering, lift it up one more time and let's pray. Say, Father, get the glory. Follow the greatest direction as they guide you down each aisle.
because the church has a few needs, I'm going to take up another offering today for those who can participate in it cheerfully and joyfully. If you can participate, give a sacrificial offering. And just bring it now where the trustees get some back. You can bring it down the two middle aisles in the name of Jesus. God bless you, people of God. Thank you. that you came to worship the Lord with us today. We have a gift for you out in the North X. Um, and so we pray that you would come back again. Come on, God, let's, let's give God praise as the man of God comes back. Precious one, thank you so much for coming out today and helping us celebrate Jesus. Amen. There will be corporate prayer on Wednesday where we anoint for connection. This Wednesday, we're going to also put our prayer request in the ark. It's been a while. The Lord, I believe, impressed upon me to let it rest for a minute. And we're going to put the request back in there. And I personally pray over that request at least five days a week. Uh, that's this Wednesday. Secondly, I want to thank all of the deacons and the elders, trustees, those who are so faithful in helping with the word. Y'all don't understand, it's difficult sometimes to push a word across to resistant people. Mm -hmm. And my elders and my trustees thus far have not been resistant. And if they are, I'm going to get rid of them. <laughs> I need somebody, and if you're sitting next to somebody who just don't want to enter in, don't let them hinder you. Amen, 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 amen. 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 So we have corporate prayer on Wednesday. Thank you again, we're getting ready to go home. Didn't God meet us here again today? So amen, amen, amen. Amen. So much is ringing in my spirit today, but I'm just going to suffice it, suffice it with this. Something my mama used to say, Long Henry Long, hello, tell me not in mournful numbers, life is but an empty dream, and the soul is dead that slumbers. 
but all is not as it seems. Life is real, and life is earnest. And the grave is not its goal. Dust thou art, to dust returneth, was not spoken of the soul. So if you do not know Jesus today, and if you have not been out telling somebody that Jesus saves, all of us are going to live eternally somewhere. Is heaven or hell? And now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. To the only God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. The God that was, the God that is. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Keep playing. Baby, I don't know who I'm talking to. That disease is not going to kill you. I don't know who it is. Yes, yeah. Oh! Don't you dare fear it. If you fear it, you're worshiping it. Fear God. Make him bigger than that city. I don't care what that doctor said. I don't care what the diagnosis said. Y'all know I don't do this often. Matter of fact, grab somebody because they ain't got it to tell them. That thing is not going to kill you. There's an assignment on your life. Keep on praising him. Keep on praising the count. There's an assignment. Oh! Oh! The prayer, the prayer, the prayer, the prayer, the prayer. It hit, it hit me hard, baby. It hit me hard. Rodney, give me C. Rodney, give me C. This is what we're going home with. And y'all take it home with you now. Will you promise me that? Yes. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. Hey! One more time, y'all. Yeah. 